minutes past nine o'clock. Good morning. It is BCFM Radio's One Love Breakfast. Thank you very much for joining us. Tin has gone out. He, I hope he's making me a cup of coffee, Jack, um, but he's gone out. Um, so I think he's probably making himself one. He's still with us, Jack. You... Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Maybe. Oh, I hope. I hope um, for you too. So that he's making you coffee. I, I hope so. Thank you. Um, me. Has everyone gone in your house now? Um, so you're at home, or can you shout? Like, can you shout loud? I could probably shout loud. My dad's probably selling wine on the phone downstairs. Is he? But yeah. So, so can you like shout, "Oi, good morning, everyone," just to prove that um, you know you're allowed to. Oi, good morning, everyone. Oh, that's good. I like that, mate. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Next time you do this, if you're at home, I'm going to make you do it at seven and wake up your whole family. I think that'll be really good. Um, yeah, now, you reckon? Yeah. Uh, we got two guests in the studio uh, this morning, and we are talking all uh, the Robbins Foundation. So we have Polly Wardle, who's head of education, and Aaron Stewart, who's a city academic lead uh, for an amazing project. They are uh, in to talk about the foundation and the courses on offer. So, uh, Polly and Aaron, good morning. Thank you for coming in on the Wonder Breakfast. Good morning. Good morning. Um, right, who do, I, who do I ask first? I think it's you, Polly. Um, tell us first of all, uh, before you tell us about the foundation, tell us a bit about you. So imagine there are these people driving along in a the car, there's Jack at home, he's saying, oh, that voice. Um, tell us a bit about you. So three things about you that people might not know. Wow, um, I wasn't expecting that question. <laughs> I know, that's why I gave it to you. <laughs> um, I'm an avid Manchester United fan. Yeah! Oh, sorry, yeah, good, go on. <laughs> yeah. Um, I used to play football myself. I've represented Great Britain at the World University Games. Wow. Um, now retired, though. God, i got some sound effects here. Wow. Oh, there you go. Look go at on. that. Yeah. Um, uh, what position? Uh, right winger. Okay. Got a bit of pace on me. Uh, any goals? Yeah, I scored against South Africa. Oh, my gosh. What a goal. So funny. Yeah, I love this. Eh? Do you know what? If I did not ask this question, I wouldn't have such a big grin on my face. Thank you. Oh, um, awesome. And my third fact is that I'm a twin. Oh, OK. Um, older or younger? I am 16 years old. 16 years? 16 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> 16 I was minutes say, older. wow, what a fate of science that yeah. is. So you're 16 minutes older. Yeah. Did you ever kind of use that? Or uh, all the like time. the look and go, well, I, I am the older one? All the time. Yeah? Oh, gosh. Thank you for that. Aaron, it's your turn <laughs> yeah, now. It. Morning, mate. Good morning. You've got a lot to follow. Yeah, lots to follow. <laughs> um, for me, I, um, again, played football from a very early age. Yeah. I had pretty much a trial with every team in the South West, but never made it. It was always told because of my height, so I was always way too small, which is, I think, the standard, standard route for not getting a, a pro contract, essentially. Mm. Uh, but then just basically went back into futsal, and um, that's something that we offered at, at the Robbins Foundation, gone back into football. Yeah. And then... Um, I've done a lot of touring over it. I've been lucky to go and explore the world, essentially. Um, my fun fact is that when I was staying in America for one summer, I came down the Franklin Mountains in El Paso and I fell onto a cactus, so I wouldn't recommend that to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. And, uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Sound effect. Say that bit that you fell into a what? Yeah, I fell into a cactus. <laughs> There you go, you got a little... Um, mate, I'm not going to ask where the cactus... Um... Uh, yeah, well, it wasn't in a nice area either, so... Uh... Oh, my days. No, not great. Oh, oh. Um, sorry about that, Aaron. That's uh, I'm afraid you've been outshone by Polly. Yeah, no, I'm not surprised at all about that. <laughs> just need to tell that. Yeah. Uh, so tell us about your role then in this, and then we'll get um, some kind of more information as well cool. uh, in terms of the, the, the courses that are on offer. So, so what, what's your job? I'm the I'm a sports lecturer and a sports coach, and I'm also the centre lead at City Academy. Um, it's one of our new sites in the Robbins Foundation, so we partner with City Academy School. Uh, we've got two groups over there at the moment, so two tutor groups, and um, we have a range of courses that we offer from, for example, a level two to a level three extended diploma and a diploma in sports coaching as well. So it's a variety of different courses um, for different academic capabilities as well. Wow. So what is the Robbins Foundation, Polly? Um, the Robbins Foundation is the official charity of Bristol City Football Club. Okay. Um, we use the badge and the power of football um, to inspire our local community, whether that's through delivering football sessions, you know, Friday night, fun, safe football sessions, getting people off the street and out of trouble, um, ranging all the way to OAB, walking football, disability football sessions. Um, and then the other side of the organisation, we run a host of, of uh, education programmes ranging from level two to level three, all the way up to BA, sports, business and entrepreneurship degree programmes. 
Um, so, you know, we, we, we use Bristol City Football Club to, to inspire our community and, you know, give, give role models and, and improve educational attainment. So being in, in places with a reach like City Academy and stuff, so kind of traditionally um, football, certainly, you know, out of the Premier League, um, had a particular reach uh, and didn't always reach kind of outlying inner city communities as well. But things like, uh, I know with uh, the Rovers Community uh, Trust as well and your, yourselves, Robbins Foundation, that's happened in recent years a lot more now. Uh, and there's been an amazing... And it's not just about an elite status. So, you know, um, the other day I was um, I was thinking of Lloyd Kelly, actually, former Bristol City player, now a uh, Bournemouth captain. Um, Lloyd, you lost on the weekend to my team. Um, but there's been some real amazing um, journeys for, for both uh, men and women in terms of football and development through Bristol City. And now with education, you say you're using the power of football. How do you do that? Is it kind of the... the the buzz of professional football and all that surrounds it to encourage more people into uh, to education that, that maybe wouldn't think that it was accessible to them? And that's exactly it. We, you know, our, our students are inside the Bristol City bubble. Mm -hmm. they, they have the identity of Bristol City. They wear the kit. They represent them um, against other community counterparts, against AFC Bournemouth, Community yeah. Programme, Exeter, Plymouth, Rovers, all these. Um, and and how exciting is it to be based at Ashton Gate Stadium as one of our centres or yeah. just to wear the kit and have work experience opportunities on match days and, and go out into the community with our coaches and upskill yourself on a you know on a personal level. How exciting is that compared to going to sixth form, being still in your, you know, school environment yeah. with your school teachers and what you already know? It's just it's it's amazing for some of our students. They come here with, you know, actually really poor grades and come out with the highest level possible mm. because they do so well in the environment that, that's around them. Mm. Aaron, so in terms of, you know, either people that are listening now, hopefully people will be or already be in their education, but there might be parents, carers and others uh, listening now. So what does that actually mean? So there's City Academy, people will have gone to City Academy through the through the usual channels, and then there's this opportunity. So people that are, um, I guess I'm asking, what do you need? What type of person do you need to be? Um, uh, what do you need to have to be able to consider this? It's someone who's usually interested in sport, um, but it's not necessarily they have to have a passion for it, it's someone who might be interested in it. So our courses range from it could be wanting to be in a practical background through coaching, um, they could just like media, and it, the courses are quite varied in terms of what they can go into for their job. So we get students who come on to us and want to go into a coaching background and follow coaching as their passion. We get some students who want to go and play sport, and then we've got some students who just don't really care for sport as much, but they want to go an idea and explore it. Um, they might want to go to study law at university, so but this is a platform that they can do that, and they can get their, their GCSE grades turning into A-level grades, so then they can go on and get to their university or apprenticeship or full-time employment and a lot of them are Bristol City fans some of them are even and Rovers fans and it's just that as Polly said it's the environment we're trying to create to allow the students to go and thrive at one of our centres. Amazing so so Polly people uh, at what age at what level will they be in school in, in order to consider uh, something like the Robbins Foundation are they going to be in year 10 um, or, or, or year 11 thinking this is what I aspire to do and and, and at what stage can they apply? Yeah, so um, students in year 11 need to need to think about what they want to do for year 12 and 13, which is their college years. So that might yeah. be a, you know, a St. Brendan sixth form, an SGS college, um, or that could be, you know, a, a different bespoke programme like ours. So we run open evenings all throughout the year, um, and we'd really encourage people to, to come along to one of those open evenings, which they can find on the, the Bristol City website um, by clicking on the Robbins Foundation tab. Um, and they can also email Sophie Hart, sophie.com heart at bcfc.co.uk who is our recruitment coordinator um, and you'll be able to hear out a lot more about kind of how to access these opportunities. Sophie's got a great family name, same as mine, you know, <laughs> and it's an H-A-R-T as well. Yeah, big up Sophie. Um, Aaron, if I were to say, look, um, I want to go to St. Brendan's, right? I'll, I'll, I'll do the standard stuff. Or maybe I don't want to go to St. Brendan's, but that's what that's the path that's been laid out for me, right? Because that's where my little, you know, that's where my sibling went, or my older older siblings went. But actually, from an academic perspective, mm, it's going to be too much like school for me. I'm just, you know, uh, maybe that's how I was as, as a younger. 
I love football, I love sport, I love the idea. So if someone's talking to you about that, and it's not about rubbishing any, any other provi education provider, but it's, it's talking about what's different about what, what you would, would offer, what would you say to a young person to say, who says, do you know what, I'm interested, but what's the difference for me? I think there's a lot of the, the courses that are very similar to the providers they go to. However, with us, it's, it is that environment, it's that culture we create. Um, it's the lecturers, and they, they build that rapport with the students. And it's not just we have 30 kids in a class. In my class at the moment, I've got 16 students. And it is I get to see them on a tutor group basis. I get to see them on an academic basis and a practical basis. So I'm their coach, I'm their lecturer, I'm their pastoral care as well. So I tend to get to see some of the students more than potentially they see their family or friends. So it's getting to know that inside and outside of college vibe from them. And it's... It's, you, we really do want the best for them. And it, for example, it's, it, I get to see them like, on a daily basis from nine till five sometimes. And they might go home, play football outside of college, and then go to bed. So it's, I generally do get to see them more. Um, and again, it's just little things that we pick up on, like the pastoral care, that they need that support. And it's, it's a welcoming environment. And, and for those, they, they feel comfortable with us. In terms of an average kind of, you know, an average week, I know weeks will vary. So, so kind of, what kind of stuff do they do, and where are they as well, physically? So usually they're in three and a half days a week. So, for example, on a Monday and Tuesday they might be in studying, and then they'll go and do their football training as well from nine till three thirty, for example. On a Wednesday we block out that day for fr uh, practical fixtures, um, and they can represent Bristol City Romans Foundation in the AOC or CFA leagues, and they can play against different six forms. They can play against different foundations, um, and even if students, for example, can't get the maths and English at GCSE level, then they can retake those on days with us as well so we do push them to strive to academic success as well as the practical success as well and then for example they might have a Thursday off and we try and get them to go and work in the in the sports industry or they can go and earn money because some of them need to pay for rent or pay for their petrol sure and then on a Friday they'll come back in and they'll study with us as well amazing um and final question I I, I guess for me Polly in terms of people wanting to know more, uh, wanting to find out, you've spoken about open days and stuff, just give us some details and, and where people can go to, to get this information if they, if they haven't got a chance to write it down now. Yeah, so if you go onto the, the Bristol City website, there's a, there's a tab along the top called Robins Foundation, um, and then along the left-hand side there's post-16 courses, education courses, and that will list a lot of information about where our different sites are. So depending on where you live in Bristol, there'll be a, there'll be a kind of a location that's most suitable to you, um, and, and that will give different uh, open evening dates and, and things like that in terms of timings and, and things. Tim, can you stop um, making noises with your chair, please? You know, sometimes, sorry, you can't get the staff here. I've got Jack hmm. causing problems uh, in his house, and I've got Tim now uh, making noise. Um, Aaron, who do you support, mate? Um, I, 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 not Cactus United. No, that's a rubbish <laughs> joke, isn't it? No, so, so who do you support? So my middle name is Ibrox, believe it or not, so I'm a Glasgow Rangers fan. <sighs> Wow, that's dedication, isn't it? You know, there, were, there was something about him I knew. You know, sometimes you, you look at people and I thought, Polly, she seems really warm and nice, right? <laughs> and then there was something about Aaron that just made me not want to take to you. My apologies. Celtic, mate. That's um, that's why the, the glass here is good. It's going to separate us. It's fine. And I don't think that we can reconcile, to be fair. No, um, probably not. But, but, yeah, good luck. And uh, I'll just have a little wink because you lost Stephen Gerrard. Did, yeah. Are you happy with your new with your new coach, though? Uh, yeah, he's a club legend. Um, so hoping that he can do a little bit better than Solskjaer. So I'm also a Chelsea fan. Oh, so. oh no, what? Rangers and Chelsea? That yeah. is terrible. I am, I am a Chelsea disliker oh. because all my brothers are Chelsea and I'm Derby. Okay. Uh, and yes, I know I suffer, right? But Derby since I was seven and I'll stay that way. Um, <laughs> Polly... If you had a chance uh, to do something from a sports perspective, um, again, or differently, or if you said, you know, would you like to be, I don't know, um, the shooter in, in, in England netball, or would you like to be uh, the winger in the current England football team? If you had an opportunity to do something again from a sports perspective, what would it be? Wow. Good I know, question. that's good, qu deep. good questions on here, isn't it? Yeah. Hey? Um, I wish that I was in a um, a more professional setup as a as a young child. I think okay. women's football is unbelievable now, and it's all over TV. And I would have loved to have seen that when yeah. I was young. And, and that's a really positive thing, isn't it? Because yeah. it, it, it raises the profile. Absolutely. Um, and we see the amazing amount of skill uh, yeah. that there is. So, so I guess so. What you're saying is you wish that. Your pathway was more yeah. uh, for soccer. For, because it has been for netball, for example, and things like that. There's been a really good professional pathway. But actually, uh, for women's soccer in this country, 
abroad it's amazing, mm. but in this country it's been slow to kick off, hasn't mm. it? 20 years ago it didn't look like what it does today, definitely. Mm. OK. Um, you two, thank you so much. Sorry for asking you questions you might not have expected. <laughs> um, so we know... Um, if you're listening, all of the informa information about the Robbins Foundation uh, will be on the BCFM social media by midday today, so we'll make sure we put all that stuff up as well uh, and get to the open days. Uh, you two, thank you for coming on. Uh, despite the fact that you are rangers, if I just see past that, um, you know, we'll maybe shake hands before you leave. Is that all right? That's fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us on The Wonder Breakfast. Brilliant. All right, it's uh, 9.28. I think we're going to take a song. Uh, then we've got our new... Coming up at 9.30.